Hello and welcome back to Everything Tumblr Tutorials. My name is Rebecca Eska and today I'm going to show you something that's not a Tumblr. So off Amazon, I decided to go ahead and purchase a four piece transparent phone case. Now these are for 12 and 12 Pro. They clearly do not fit my 12 Max. So I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate them anyways. As you'll see, I've already attempted to like off screen do a tester, if you will, before demonstrating for you guys today. That particular phone case, the larger one, I bought that a, probably a year or so ago, and I'm just going to refurbish it and add a little bit of sparkle to it. Now, both of these 12x12 12 12 vinyl sheets are from AB Designs. So I did my practice case with the snakeskin, and now I'm going to show you with the floral print just how easy this is. So all of these cases are clear and transparent, as you can see. Now you can use any particular vinyl that you want. And the blessing that you can see right through this is I can gauge, you, you know, kind of going around a particular vinyl to see which image of that vinyl I'd like to use for the phone case. Now I've already chosen my specific spot and I've already traced it out. So the next thing we need to do is just cut out our image. So before we get started, I want you to know that all of these cases come with a little film over it. Almost very hard to see, but you want to be really careful and go ahead and pull that up before you get started. I also want to point out that I did not sand this. However, if you prefer to sand and you feel more comfortable with that, then absolutely sand the case first. Use alcohol and clean it up before you get started. So we're going to go ahead and pull some of this vinyl off of its backing, lay it onto the phone case, and we're going to use the soft side of our squeegee to help us place this onto the case, making sure that we don't have large air pockets that are going to show on the reverse side. Now typically it's not going to matter because your phone's going to be in this case anyways, but we're trying to make it look as absolutely nice and professional as we possibly can. So as you continue to press down and get that vinyl on there, you can easily flip it over and just see exactly in which particular sections you might need to press down a little bit harder just to remove some of those air pockets. Once I've done that, then I'm just going to take my fingernail, and if you have nails and one that's not broken, use your fingernails to really get into those grooves on this back side, and that'll help you when it gets time to cut it with the X-Acto knife. Now that we're ready, we're going to go ahead and use our X-Acto knife to go ahead and trim off these edges to remove the excess vinyl. And remember, it's not going to take a lot of pressures, we're only cutting the vinyl. I really hope you're enjoying this video so far, and if so, please hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more tutorials coming soon. Also, click that bell to get notifications for every time I launch a new video. Now that it's time to go ahead and remove the vinyl, you do want to do this pretty slowly just to make sure you don't accidentally tear vinyl where you might have missed and didn't cut all the way through. So just take your time when removing this excess vinyl. Thank you. 
Now that most of my vinyl is removed, I'm just double checking because I have a couple of little sections right here in the corners that I wanted to tighten up before we get ready to epoxy. So I absolutely love the way this looks and I don't even have my epoxy and additive mixed in, but I'm a sucker for anything floral. So now that everything is situated, you can see that this has grooves and that's this is what this is meant for, for the epoxy, so it won't overflow unless you add too much. So I'm going to go ahead and get things set up so we can get back to getting these epoxied. So I decided that I'm going to use MJ's Magic Mix, which is a silver additive that I'm going to use within my epoxy. You need to remember when it comes to glitter additives that it's very, very fine and it does not take a lot at all. It could truly overwhelm your entire project. It's absolutely stunning. This is my first time using it and I cannot wait to see what it's going to look like. So when you're adding in these additives into your epoxy, add a little bit at a time because you can always add more but you cannot take it away. So for these coats of epoxy, I am using Facet from Counterculture DIY. I also mixed up 30 mLs for both phone cases, so it took about 15 mLs approximately for each phone case. So just like with a tumbler, once you have all of the epoxy spread out the way that you want it, hit it very, very fast with a heat torch, if you feel comfortable with that, because you're going to want to pop any bubbles that you may or may not be able to see. So once we're done with these, we're ready to move on to my original phone case that does fit my cell phone. So for my cell phone cover, I just wanted to kind of bring it back to life. So for my cell phone cover, I decided to use Baby Riata, which is a beautiful color shift fine. It matched the case absolutely perfectly. 
The only thing I do want to mention is that I did not add enough glitter into my epoxy, which is super, super annoying because I know better. So once I have all this spread out, some of it still looks clear and almost blotchy. So I decided once I had the whole thing covered with the epoxy, I was just going to dump all the glitter onto the top of this case and revise it the next morning. So at this point, you can really see pretty evidently that it is blotchy. Now, I guess I could have left it this way, but the whole point was to bling bling. So this is where I start to add in and start dumping the glitter right over top of this fresh epoxy. Once this was fully cured, I was able to easily go back through and wipe off all the excess glitter that remained onto the phone case because where there is no epoxy, the glitter won't stick. Once I finished with all of this excess glitter that I used, I decided just to leave these guys alone and let them fully sit. This is now the next morning and everything looks beautiful. This actually was very smooth. I thought it was going to be kind of rough, but it wasn't. Though it's smooth, glitter still wants to come off. So I'm going to have to do another thin clear coat of resin on both the purple one and my snakeskin because this one, though, looked absolutely beautiful, had a little dimple. One, one little annoying dimple. Now my floral one is absolutely perfect. She looks amazing. Everything is nice and smooth. I don't have any dimples of any kind. And FYI, if you do not have the brand new MJ Magical Mix, you must get it. I will make sure I have the link down for that additive down below so you guys can get that. So I'm doing such a thin amount that I actually kind of chucked one glove and decided to kind of hold this and rub this in very, very thinly, again, as it did not require much. All I'm trying to do is really seal in this glitter, but I did not want it to be thick. So I'm just holding it with one hand while using a gloved finger to rub in the epoxy. This way I can really get a sense of where there's epoxy and where there isn't. Once I'm done with this one, I'll go straight over into the snakeskin and these phone cases are complete. If and when you're working on any type of project and you have an excess amount of epoxy, if you have time, throw that excess into a, another mold. This way it never goes to waste. Also, if at any point in which you get epoxy where you don't want it to be, you can easily take a baby wipe and clean up those edges, but you're going to want to do that before this cures.
I want to thank you so much for watching and be sure to find me on TikTok under Rebecca Escott, Facebook Everything Tumblr Tutorials for continued learning. Remember, all the links will be in the description for you below.